guys. Hi everyone. I need to work on like an intro to you guys because I feel very unprepared. <laughs> or I don't know, I feel like a lot of YouTubers have like their shtick that they say like, hi everyone, hi guys, and I don't know, I don't, I'll work on it. But um, hi, <laughs> my plan is to, now I feel self-conscious, like ah, uh, sorry. <laughs> So for today, I'm going to redo the fabric that's inside this lovely vintage picnic basket. Even though I do love the fabric, I just don't think it's very sanitary to keep vintage fabric near like food. <laughs> I'm not sure how to clean it properly, so I just want to redo the whole interior. With redoing the fabric inside, I want to add um, compartments where uh, you would put the utensils and plates and having a little area for the cups. There's a lot of room to work with and I've been Pinterest boarding like a lot of inspiration ideas. So I've been doing that and uh, for the inside of the fabric, I um, wanted to kind of keep it traditional like picnic style, maybe red and white or you know something kind of kitcheny uh, theme but uh, I really don't have that in my stock and I really don't want to go and buy fabric just for this project when I have so much fabric in my little stash hoarding area. So um, I do have this fabric. I got this idea from my last video where I redid a dress from one of my first projects into a two-piece and uh, I have a lot of those first year projects with me still and um, you know, it's like, uh, it looked great in photos, but it was falling apart on the inside and very poorly done and thrown together just because I had to take a picture with it. This fabric is from a dress that I did. It was supposed to be like a Cinderella pinup inspired dress. <clears throat> it looked cute, but you know, between you and me, it, it wasn't done well. But I do have a lot of the fabric left over and it's this really pretty, um, butterfly fabric with um, blue and like really light violet. I think it'd be really cute and something that not very common that you would see in a picnic basket, which I love anything unique. So I'm um, excited to use the fabric. Also planning on redoing the dress that I had done, change it up a little uh, to reveal the finished project of the picnic basket because it could be matching together. I'm not too sure how to redo the dress now, but um, it'll be something I'll work on once this is finished. <laughs> I've never done this before, and but uh, that's never stopped me before. <laughs> I'm just gonna give it a try and we'll see how it turns out and hopefully it's something to be proud of and it's something I plan on using for picnics or beach days to have everything uh, all the food and drinks all put together nicely and it's something I'm really looking forward to so let's hope it turns out good so, let's get started <laughs> okay so the first thing I did was try to daintily take off the old fabric using a seam ripper but I realized very quickly that the seam ripper wasn't going to do anything and it was probably gonna take forever so I decided to just rip it apart yeah, that, that was a bad idea. <laughs> The fabric was so dirty and disgusting, I really didn't like touching it. So what I did was I measured the inside of the front panel, the part of the basket where it lifted, and from edge to edge along the sides, it was roughly 18 inches. So when I cut out the fabric, I added at least two and a half inches more 
to each side because I knew I was going to fold down the edges so it would look seamlessly. And it's always a good idea to add more to your fabric because the last thing you want is you're missing a big gap of fabric to cover and it's just better. You could always trim it away so to ease your mind and your worries always add more than you need. This is what it looked like cut out and I gave it a good press and then I pressed along the edges. I tried to sew as little as possible, so pressing was perfectly fine. Before gluing down what we just cut out, I added a matching strap and I just marked it with a little sharpie to where they would be placed and I had these small inch nails and I poked a hole through and I hammered away. I think that was my favorite part, just hammering it down. <laughs> oh and I forgot to mention, I did eventually add another strap to the other side. I think it was because my basket didn't have a strap but it's I didn't realize that it was because it probably came off <laughs> and I just thought like oh that's supposed to have just one strap so I did eventually um, put in another one I just had to rip off a little of the sides um, to where I glued down and it, it turned out good but yeah that was totally my mistake here I'm using a hot glue gun and gluing down one side and slowly moving across I maybe held it down for two seconds and then I continued on hot gluing I just was really careful of not having any creases or folds This is what it looked like finished. Your hot glue gun is going to be your best friend in this project. On to the bottom of the basket. I measured out what would be the bottom and I made sure to have some seam allowance doing the same process, measuring where it would be and folding it and gluing down the bottom and that's what it looked like. For the sides of the basket, I cut out the fabric with the seam allowance and I had to sew down uh, one side so it would be easier to glue. I'm sorry for the interruption. My boyfriend loves to bug me and he loves the spotlight. <laughs> I left the top open so I could pin down the side so it would be all even. So I would recommend pinning down the folded edge and then gluing. Don't just start gluing because there might be some areas where you're pulling down more and it's going to be uneven. So pinning down the fabric first before gluing was a lot easier. I definitely recommend it. I left the corners to do lastly and it was a lot easier to pin down and make sure it was folded evenly and that's what it looks like. And then it was a little too plain for me. I needed some more embellishing so I went to the dollar store and I found this really pretty baby blue trim and I thought it'd be perfect to go along the edges. I repeated the process of pinning down where I wanted it placed and then I glued it down. So this was so much easier, pinning it and then gluing it, not having to worry. And I do worry a lot, so this was helpful.
I'm so happy I added the blue trim, it added exactly what it was missing. I marked with a pencil where I wanted the utensils to be placed and I was adding a fork knife and a spoon. So I had a bit of elastic and I folded a loop and glued it down. I placed a knife as a tester to make sure it was the right side and it wasn't going to move around in the basket. Here it is completed with the utensil set for two. Now that the basket is complete, I moved on to doing something with this dress. Again, it was one of my first projects and it's not done well as you can imagine. And I can't believe I'm going close up so you can see the seam work. That was a mistake. <laughs> I first took off the blue sheer fabric that was in the front to make it a little more wearable and less princessy, which I'm all about the princess vibes, but just for this dress it needed to go. Having lots of blue trim left over, I had a stroke of genius to put the rest on the dress and I love this idea. Adding that blue trim hid all my little mistakes. And it matched even more with the basket, which I love anything matching. So I added the trim along the neckline and on the waistband. To give you guys nightmares, here is the inside with all the raw seam sewing. <laughs> I left it alone. I thought it would be a testament to how far I've come and um, you know when you're teaching yourself a skill it's not going to be great the first couple of tries but what's important is that you keep going and you keep learning and you know what to do for next time so all of the first year projects please be proud of them